thank you guys for joining a tips and tricks session today. Um, today's session is about how to refer to elements in test trigger. And this is really one of our secret sauce and one of the things that differentiate us um, and make your life so much easier. So I will have um, Roman take it away. All right. Let's try this again. All right. So uh, this is what happens with uh, most test automation tools. So uh, when you need to uh, select any elements, you would open the developer tools. Uh, you would analyze the uh, HTML page structure to uh, find the element you need to use in your tests, right? And so why is this not an ideal approach for end-to-end -end testing? Well, aside from just being uh, inconvenient to search for all those locators, there's a much bigger problem. Uh, your test does not entirely represent an actual use case. Uh, because if you're using any element locators that are set by developers, um, it's not 100% black box testing anymore. And your test relies on implementation details instead of um, being purely on the visual layer, right? Um, so that's why in test rigor, you can call elements how you actually see them on the screen. And it's great for your tests because if, for example, a developer changes uh, a locator for, say, a button, um, the button actually looks the same and operates the same to a human, uh, and the taste tests should not fail. So with test rigor, it will not. Um, so this approach, however, is not uh, always easy for test rigor as a tool, though, because... Well, modern websites can be extremely complex and there are elements that don't necessarily look like the elements you actually need. Uh, there are nested elements, iframes, and a lot of fun like that. Um, so how Test Trigger operates is it analyzes all locators and then um, it can tie multiple uh, locators to each element that you select. And so um, the goal of the session is to show you different ways to refer to elements so that you can always find a straightforward way, a reliable way to refer to any elements you need. And most importantly, your test is robust. So basically, how do you let a trigger know which exactly element you want to choose regardless of the con context for this element? All right. Uh, so I know I've just said that the whole idea is to uh, refer to elements as you see them on the screen, but we do get requests from our existing clients from time to time who still want to use XPaths or IDs or CSS selectors, or perhaps they have custom attributes they want to use. Um, and even though that's not something we recommend to do, Test Rigor does support that. So let me first show you how to do that to get this out of the way. Uh, let's see. Let's go to trigger. So you go to your uh, settings. Then you go to advanced. And so from here, you see there's a section um, that's called custom attributes to consider. So first, one thing is if you have any custom attributes that you want to um, within your test suit, uh, you have any custom attributes that you want test trigger to consider, then you need to um, enter them here. 
new line separated. And then uh, in case you have any uh, locators that you want to use. Um, so for example, here, there's a CSS class that you can use. So this is the command here, enter uh, your input into the uh, CSS class, right? So it's actually very, um, very simple to do that. All right. Um, so now that's that are that is out of the way. Um, Test rigor recognizes a lot of different elements, such as drop downs, checkboxes, labels, and so on. And um, a great way to make your um, locator more robust, for example, is to add a relative location. And uh, an added benefit here is that you can also combine relative locations. So let me give you an example of that. Um, so. All right. So this is how Test Rigor sees the page. Um, so the command here is click on orders, click on orders below your account to the right of find the list or registry, right? And uh, so this, this makes the test more robust. And you also have an option to specify how relative to the element your relative location is. And what I mean here is how much of an overlap you want to have with the element you're uh, relating to. So default value is 30% overlap, but Let's say there's no overlap at all, like in this example. So if you can see here, so the command is click on music library to the right of your lists. So by default, here's you see you can see your lists. There should be at least 30% overlap of your lists to the right of music library to the right of your lists. But in case there's no overlap, you can just say roughly, and that would mean if there's anywhere on the screen to the right side of your list, that that test trigger is going to recognize it. Okay. And you can even specify precisely the overlap percentage. For example, you can say with at least 5% overlap or with at least 20% overlap. And just just FYI, normally you wouldn't need to be so precise. Um, this is just for your information in case you encounter a tricky element um, to, to refer and you just want uh, your test to be bulletproof. Okay. Um, you can also use indexing. For example, you have um, two add to core buttons located on your page. For the second button, you can say, click second add to cart button. Awesome, what's next? Uh, feel free to combine indexing and relative locations. For example, you can say, click on second add to cart button below my section. Another way to refer to an element is to use in the context of. So let me give you an example here. Okay, this is a good one. So here we say, click on trash and test trigger, by the way, automatically recognizes that this icon stands for uh, trash icon. Within the context of table, responsive table, this is our table, at row containing York one, and column actions. So that's how you use in the context of. And by the way, by the way, you can have up to four references total. Um, so for example, click on second button below title and to the right of in in the context of.
So another command you might want to use is exactly. Exactly means it's case sensitive. And also it means that if the element contains something else, it wouldn't count. So here's an example. Uh, as you can see on the screen, it says click on exactly account and lists. Here, if we put account and our command as lowercase, or say click on exactly account, test trigger would not recognize this element on purpose because it does not exactly match. Now, uh, what if you have a, for example, small icon that has no identifier that you want to click on, or you want to um, click on a specific part of an element? By default, test trigger clicks on the center of the element, uh, but if you, what if you want to click on the side of it? Um, and there is a command for that called offset. What it does is it uses pixels from the top left corner of an element or from the screen uh, horizontally and then vertically. Just keep in mind that it can be different based on the size of the screen here reason. So we do not um, recommend to use it too often. Um, by the way, another place you might want to use offset is when you use uh, drag and drop functionality. So you can see here, drag con canvas with offset. So you want to be very precise where you drag and drop, right? Great. So we've discussed all the uh, main ways you can refer to elements in Test Trigger. Uh, to wrap it up, I just need to mention that you can also select elements um, using OCR. And we just recently had a session on visual validations. So feel free to check it out on our Test Trigger channel on YouTube. And uh, you can, what you can do with that is you can say, click on element using OCR, or it will combine um, locators that the server can find with OCR. Or you can say, click on an element using OCR only. And for example, uh, one of our clients had a use case where in the mobile app, there would be a pop-up uh, that would appear in a random place and disappear um, in two seconds. So using OCR only would be the best command to use in such a case. So here, as you can see on this example, check that page um, doesn't contain best value plan. And here, check the page contains best value plan using OCR. Here you can see that uh, there's an example in the family plan there's a line that says best value plan uh, on the image and test trigger is able to identify that. All right, folks, that's it for today. Uh, please ask questions in the comments below if you have any. And uh, I hope it was helpful. And uh, you see how easy it is to refer to ele any elements in test trigger. There are a lot of options uh, to make it as flexible for you as possible. And uh, make it from a user's point of view, making your tests bulletproof.